Hey y'all, this is Tyler Blake with TylerBlakeArt.com again, and this is Let's Draw Presidential Candidates as Zombies, episode number 9. Um, a little bit different this time, I have been grouping them into two, but I, I, I just ended up shooting a lot more footage of this fellow, and so the video is going to be longer, and I, I thought, I don't, I don't want to do like a 16 or 20 minute video or whatever, so... Um, this time we only get our third and final Republican challenger, Bill Weld. Um, he is the former governor of Massachusetts. He also ran as vice president on the Libertarian ticket last time, you know, in, in uh, 2016. And after that failed, he, uh, he endorsed Hillary Clinton over President Trump, and he also, I want to say he endorsed Barack Obama back in 2008. Um, I think that's right. I could be wrong. But uh, anyhow, and now he, he he is a, or he, I don't know, he might have dropped out already, but he was running as a Republican challenger to President Trump. <clears throat> so, um, you know, I'm... If you watch these, you have seen this process before, where I'm starting to lay down my values with my Arteza Real Brush Pens in a kind of a bluish gray, which works well for dead flesh. And then I'll start adding in some of the details. Um, some of you might wonder why do I use the color that I use for all of the skin tones. Um, partly that was a, well, that was kind of a happy accident. Um, I was experimenting with what's known as the Grise method, and if you've seen many of my videos, you've probably heard me mention that at one time or another. It's a pretty old, like hundreds of years old watercolor technique where you lay down your values in gray first and then you paint over them, and because watercolor is a translucent medium, the values show through, and that way you're not trying to do like, you know, the the darker version of red is a different red, you know, because real color just doesn't really work out that way. So, anyway, um... Also, I, I, I really wanted all of these to have a cohesive style from the first one I did, which was Jay Inslee, to the last one that I will do, which will be President Trump. Although I'll probably, I might do Trump and Biden at the same time. Um, actually, I'm going to be starting to experiment with live video soon, and I, you know, I'm still going to save them two for last, but I, I might, if I can figure that out and get it going to where I like it, because, you know, I'm a technophobe and I might really hate it. Um, I might do those live. So, uh, anyway, um, one thing that has come up over the last couple is I, I realized that I really kind of like the idea of having the dark circles around the eyes. So I'll, I might go back and add that in, effect in a little bit more on some of the early ones. But, um, anyways, I digress. I was talking about the color tone. Um, partly, so I, I was working on the Grise method. Oh, excuse me. Um... And uh, one of the grays that I have in my Arteza set is called uh, Parma Gray, which is a bluish gray. So it, it's a cool gray. Um, so I, I just started using that, and I ended up just liking the way it looked. Um, and when I started to say partly earlier, uh, this is where the partly comes in, I decided to keep them all that color uh, as kind of an homage to one of my favorite zombie movies, Dawn of the Dead, and of course I am referring to the original good version. Um, if you've never seen it, it was done by George Romero back in the 70s. I, I think it was 70s, like 72 or something. And um, they didn't really have any budget, and so for the zombie effects they mostly just made people blue with like, you know, maybe dark circles around their eyes. And it's pretty great. Um, there, you know, so you have like these survivors that are trapped in the nuclear powered shopping mall, so all the power and water are still on <laughs> during the zombie apocalypse. And, uh, yeah. Um, anyways, so that, that's, that's why I do the skin tone the way I do. Um, for the very small handful of you out there who might have seen the presidential zombies I did in 2016. Um, or even 2008, although nobody really saw those because I, I hadn't really started using... I, I hadn't really started putting my stuff online at that point, but I used to match the actual skin tone, and back then I was working with Copic markers. Um, now that I switched to these, it, it was just kind of the way the process kind of worked out on its own, so... 
Ugh, excuse me. Ugh. Let's see how much of the remaining uh, three minutes and... Well, roughly three minutes I can take up with yawning. Um, so, uh, speaking... Okay, so speaking of color choice, um, artists use... And, uh, well, people tend to... When they start to kind of hone their skills in and kind of zero in on what they want to do, um, a lot of people will pick like a specific color palette that they try to stick with a lot of the time, and it, it's kind of like it becomes part of your brand. Um, so, and I'm sorry, I'm very tired. Um, when you're studying art, you learn that it's considered a good idea to limit your color palette as much as you can. Because if you have like just like you know green and purple and yellow and orange and red and blue and just every you know, it I'm going to borrow a phrase from Scott Circlin because I think it's hysterical. It'll look like a rainbow barfed on it. So um, actually, I'm paraphrasing from Scott Circlin. So um, they usually say like try and keep it down to two or three colors. Um, so gray is not considered a color, and for, I've heard people say that brown is not considered a color for some reason. Um, I'm not sure that I agree with that, but if it gets me around, if it keeps me within the the unwritten rule that you should limit your palette, but I, that kind of gives me another thing to use, I'm cool. So my palette is basically red, yellow, and blue. Um, those are the three primary colors, and that, that would be what's known as a triadic color scheme on the color wheel. If you're not familiar with the color wheel, like if, if you're not an artist but you're interested in this, or if you're just starting out with art, um, there are a lot of good videos on the color wheel, but I'm not. this video is long enough as it is, so I'm not really going to dive into that. But a color wheel is an excellent tool to help you um, pick colors that are going to go well together. So, um, so I, pretty much everything I do is red, yellow, and blue with grays and browns, and, and of course black. But, um, yeah. Uh, typically, you know, and that, that gives me a pretty wide range to work with, and then, you you know, you can use different hues and shades of those to give yourself more variety if you need to. Um, I'll give you an example on the pirate riding a dinosaur that you see on the title screens for these. Everything is blue, yellow, and red, except for where it's... Oh, I'm coming up on the end of the video, so I'll continue that thought later. Uh, my name is Tyler Blake, and I approve this message. Thanks for watching.